Hi everyone, I'm Jane, and today we're going to paint a simple mystical forest. Before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already so that you can paint with me every week. And then check out the video description below for a full list of materials. Now let's get started. Okay, today I have a 12 by 16 inch canvas, brand new out of the package. I did add a layer of gesso to it. And that's because with the smoky background technique that we're gonna do, sometimes, especially transparent colors like the burnt umber and deep violet, when you scrub them, they can be very, very thin so that it takes a couple layers to cover the canvas. The gesso helps kind of grab it so it doesn't take as many layers. If you don't have gesso or you don't want to gesso the surface, that's okay too. Now I'm gonna use my number 12 cloud brush and it is dry, I'm gonna use it dry because if it's wet, it will smear the paint rather than make it kind of smoky and foggy. Now I always get asked, where can I find a brush like that? I can't find those brushes anywhere. You can only get these on my website. So there's a link in the video description below that will take you right to them. So over here I have burnt umber and deep violet and some white. So I'm gonna start by grabbing some burnt umber and some deep violet, kind of mix them together just loosely. I do want it to lean a little closer on the deep violet side. And I'm gonna grab a bit of white. I'm gonna start over here because I want this side to be darker and then fading to a lighter color. So I'm gonna start by putting the tip of my brush on my canvas and just kind of spiraling it. That helps deposit the paint. And then I can kind of go that flat foot pressure and scrub it out. Don't go too dark over here in this dark area because then your tree might not show up later, the large tree. Don't worry about making sure your colors are perfectly blended. Just worry about covering all of the white spots of the canvas. So if you use the tiptoe of the brush like that, it kind of digs down into there. Kind of using it flat or scrubbing helps smooth colors together. Now, every time I go back for more paint, my color is probably gonna be a little bit different than before, and I'm okay with that. That's what's gonna help give us kind of a a smoky, misty feel. Don't be afraid to use a good amount of paint. If you pick up just a tiny bit of paint, it's not gonna go very far. So you can see I'm picking up a good amount of paint and it's still not going very far. Part of that is because of the gesso, the way it just grabs the paint and holds it there. I'm using that lighter pressure just to make sure it's not getting too transparent in spots. Because I don't want to have to do two layers. I'm just keeping that same color mixture all through this corner. And in just a minute, we'll start to go lighter. Take it up here. I'm gonna use that half foot pressure to make sure I don't have a line anywhere. Here, just get it to start being kind of fuzzy. You can even pull it out into the area that you know you're gonna to have to be lighter. That way they blend together nicely. When you're doing this technique, you don't have to worry about working quickly because it doesn't matter if this dries before you get to this next part. Just work as quickly as you want to, or as slowly as you want to. Speed is not the goal. I hear people say all the time, you know, I'm not fast enough, I need to get faster, I'm a slow painter. None of that matters. I don't, I don't know why some people think that, you know, there's a certain speed that you should paint at. There isn't. You take as long as you need to on a painting. You know, I try to keep my paintings a little on the shorter side, just so you guys don't get bored while watching the videos. But, you know, when I'm painting for myself, I did pick up just a little less of this color and I'm gonna pick up a little bit more white. Start just outside of the color. Don't start into it because then you'll lose a bunch of it. So I'm gonna start just outside of it. 
and then scrub it down into it. Lighten my pressure a little bit as I work into it. But anyway, when I paint for myself, sometimes I'll take weeks on a painting. In fact, I have two going on right now. One I've been working on off and on for about three weeks. And another one, I'm almost a week into it, and it has probably at least another week's worth of work. So, you know, painting quickly should not be your goal. Taking the time that you need to, to do what you want to do, that should be your goal. Take your time. See how we have quite a color difference here, especially up in this area, but I wanna make sure that I don't have a line there. So I'm gonna lighten that pressure and just kinda scoot it into there. Being careful that I'm not lifting paint. I'm just using basics here. The heavy body seems to kinda grab a little bit better. The purple and the brown aren't any less transparent in the heavy body, but they do seem to kinda latch onto the area and stay a little bit truer. So if you're using heavy body paint, you probably won't have quite as hard of a time. So the different brush strokes I'm using, I'm doing this tiptoe kind of twirly thing. That's gonna lay paint down, but it also gives you a hard edge. So you don't wanna do that everywhere because you'll end up with little corkscrews all over your canvas. So go back and forth between that and kind of scrubbing. See how the scrubbing gets me a nice soft transition. If I corkscrew right here, I'm just gonna deposit this lighter color right over that darker color and have a weird transition line. But I will corkscrew right there where the canvas is showing because that helps cover it. Just break up those lines a bit. And let's go lighter. I'm just picking up a little bit of this color now, not very much of it, and a good amount of white. Again, we'll start just outside of the color. And then scrub it in. And don't be afraid to get it in there. Take it as far in as you want. See, I'm taking it quite a ways into there. And you can always come back later and change the colors too. If I came back and said, oh, I do want this darker, I can come back and do that. If I decided I wanted it lighter, I could come back and do that even once it's completely dry. line, just some light pressure. You can pull it down into here a little bit. I feel like this is a little bit too dark, so I just picked up a little bit of white. See, and I can go right into it and change it. If you start to see that as you go over a spot that you're lifting paint, either lighten your pressure like that, that should help get you the blend without lifting anymore, or just let it dry and come back to it later. Just white this time. I still have quite a bit of that purple-brown mixture on here, so I just picked up some white. Okay, now I have a little bit of cadmium yellow medium 
And again, I'm just gonna pick up white, no more purple. And just a tiny bit of this yellow. See that there's really not very much yellow on my brush. And again, I'm gonna start outside of the color. So what that little hint of yellow is gonna do is start giving us the illusion of light coming through. That's where our light source is. Don't be afraid to scrub that little bit of yellow into here. You don't want to line where your yellow starts and your purple ends. You want it to be really seamless, that transition. If you feel like there's too much purple on your brush left over, just wipe it off really good on a paper towel. Don't wash it. I just picked up white there. I just, you know, change it a little bit every time I go back for more paint. Just make sure you're not picking up too much yellow because you don't want this corner to be bright yellow. You just want it to be a little bit warmer than everything else. And I feel like this corner isn't quite getting light enough. I did have quite a bit of purple on my brush, but I like the way it's transitioning. So for now, I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm just gonna keep going, because I can make adjustments. So we'll just finish it up. Notice I didn't take it all the way to the bottom of my canvas. That's because we're gonna paint over that with the ground anyway. If you're not sure where you want your ground to be, you can feel free to paint all the way down to the bottom. I just didn't feel like it was necessary. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry for a few minutes. And when I come back, I'm gonna to touch up some of these spots over here that are still showing and then just brighten this corner and then we'll move on. Okay, that is dry enough for me to do some touching up. And I did clean off my brush, but I dried it off really, really well with a paper towel because remember, if it's wet, it smears the paint and you'll get a completely different look. So I'm just gonna put you in time lapse real quick. I'm gonna brighten this area a bit, just fill in a couple of these holes and then we'll move on. Okay, so I'm just kind of dabbing some white on right here rather than 
doing too much scrubbing. But as you could see over here, because this is all dry, I had no problem getting this color that I applied to look like it was blending in there. And that's just because when we scrub it, it goes super thin. And the way we were scrubbing it, it kind of it kind of thins the paint out as it goes. So it can look like it's blending in over top of paint that's completely dry. So I'm just gonna finish this up super quick and we're done with the background. I think that's looking much better. Okay, I'm gonna move on to my half inch flat brush and this is also one of the brushes available on my website. And I wanna use this brush because the gesso, it makes the canvas very dry, it adds a little bit of extra tooth and so we need a nice stiff brush to dig the paint down in there. And this brush has lots and lots of very fine bristles but they're quite stiff so it's got a good amount of strength to push the paint down into that texture. So I'm gonna wet it in my jar a little bit. And what we want to do first is create a color very similar to the lightest part of our sky here. So I'm going to grab just a hint of my purple brown mixture and a little bit of yellow. That might be too much. There we go. And some white, very pale color. And we'll come in here and just with kind of a side to side motion, see short brush strokes that helps keep kind of a kind of a natural shape to the ground rather than just going straight back and forth, which is gonna give us a very flat look. So little brush strokes. And I'm taking this color out a little bit farther than this color goes. Let's darken that just a little bit. I'm gonna grab a little bit more purple and brown and mix it in there. I'm gonna start just over here and work toward that color right into it. That little sideways flick, that helps kind of smooth it together. And then I can come in and fill this in a bit more. Let's go a little bit darker. So every time I move over a couple of inches in the color or on the canvas, I'm gonna go just a little bit darker in my mixture. So let's start over here and over into that. See that little sideways flick helps get it blended. A little bit darker. We'll bring this part of the ground up a little bit. That might be too dark actually. Let's pull in just a little bit of white there. There we go. Don't really want the ground to get completely lost. A little bit of extra water. There we go. And I still didn't bring it down because I'm gonna have another piece of ground. So let's do some trees. I'm gonna use my 5 8 inch angle brush and I'm gonna again mix up a color similar to the lightest part of our background. It's a little bit of water on my brush. Pull some extra white into that. It can be, your trees can be a little bit darker than the background. You don't want them to get completely lost. You just want the colors to be about the same. So we're going quite light and with that yellow. And I'm gonna start over here. Uh, that might be too light, but let's see. I'm gonna start up at the top. So my angle brush is pointing up and I'm just gonna drag that down. That's not too bad, actually, that color. We'll do a few. See, they're very thin. 
and widen out a little at the bottom. These are just going to be very distant trees. Maybe we'll put another one kind of going off the edge over here. And at the base, I'm just going to kind of, can't really tell too much right here, but as we keep going, you'll be able to tell. So I'm just taking the edge of my brush and flicking up just a little bit to cover the base of those trees and introduce a hint of texture. Just kind of pull that over there a bit. Let's do just a couple more in this color. And maybe we'll do one right here. And notice my trees aren't straight. They've got little wobbles. They angle off to different directions. There, see there you can see what I was doing. So it's just the edge of my brush and it's just like that. I feel like I want to add a few more. Add as many as you want. If you just want a couple, just do a couple. They can cross over each other. That's not a big deal. Trees in the forest sometimes do that. And let's do just, we're just going to insinuate some leaves. Our trees are very tall, so all we're seeing is the trunks. I'm going to take the corner of my brush right up here and just kind of zoom you in there a little bit. So I'm just using the corner of my brush and I'm just kind of dotting. See, and in some areas you'll be able to see those better and in some areas you probably won't see them at all, but that's okay. And you can dot some of these little shapes even where you don't have a tree trunk. Don't keep it clustered around one of the tree trunks. So like, I'm gonna take some out this way. It's just gonna help say that this forest has a large canopy that's kind of hanging down. Okay, let's go a little bit darker. Pull a little more purple brown into that mixture. And you can let these overlap. So just because we stopped those trees there doesn't mean that this next set has to start right there. I'm actually gonna take one and start it right here. And I can put a little extra pressure on my brush so it's a little bit wider. Bring it down a bit farther too. If you decide that's too dark, just let it dry and you can come back and put a lighter color over it. I'm still gonna do that breaking so see that helps create a bit of distance. We've got some trees back there and we've got these ones that are coming closer to us a little bit. See how much pressure I put on my brush there. Almost full pressure at the bottom, just so it widens out a bit. Space your trees out interestingly. You know, so don't do them in a row. Don't start on the right and move to the left and never go back. Maybe start on the right, move to the left, come back and, you know, go back and forth. Well, let's just do another one right here. We'll make this one pretty straight and starting to get bigger. That might be a little too light, actually, right there. Let's pull a little bit of our darker colors in. See if that's better. But also remember, it's relative to the colors you're putting it on. So I could take, you know, this exact same color from here and put it over here, and that tree's gonna look lighter than that one does. And so it's possible that these colors are 
pretty exact. In fact, let's see. Not far off at all. See that? In fact, this color is slightly darker than that color. Okay, let's go darker still. I'm just going to mix it over here in this area. Again, I'm going to overlap. So I'm going to take this one here, quite wide, heavy pressure as we bring it down. Just make sure those little holes are filled in. Oh, we didn't do the leaves on the other trees. We got it. We should do that. So let's go back into here. I'm going to add just a hint of that yellow in just to keep that color tamed down a bit. And again, just the corner of my angle brush. Okay, let's keep going with that dark color now. It's dark, but there's still some white in there. Putting a little heavier pressure on the corner of my brush here. Just so those dots are a bit bigger. And you know, honestly, we probably won't end up seeing a lot of these. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to my half inch flat brush, wet it a little bit, and I've got some black, but I don't wanna use pure black. I'm gonna get some of my purple brown mixture and I'll grab a little bit of black and throw it in there. So I want this to be super, super dark. And again, I'm gonna use the edge of my brush and just kind of pull it. It's okay if it goes over top of that ground we did in the back. And then we can fill it in all with that same purple, brown, black mixture. Okay, now we can start working on our tree. So I'm gonna use that same mixture and I want my tree to be very gnarly and twisty and old, super old looking. So I'm just going to kind of decide where I want to start, bring a line kind of up and let it go off there. And again, over here, we will cross it over there. Kind of turning my brush a little bit so it's nice and gnarly and then fill that in. Right down here, I'm gonna kind of spin my brush a little bit so I can get a nice kind of organic type shape. Same thing here, see how I'm rolling my brush just a bit to kind of break up that super smooth straight line. You know, my tree looks totally goofy right now. It's 
it's not going to stay looking like that. Let's pull this side up and we'll bring it up into this branch. Still, I'm kind of putting some good pressure on my brush and kind of rotating it side to side. When you do that, don't try to make sure that your line stays straight. The point of rolling the brush is to let that line get out of control a little bit. So just as you go, ever so slightly, kind of push it with your thumb and let it roll from one side to the next. So let's do that here too. So I'm going to start here, kind of spin my brush a little back and forth. So that's a good start. I know that my tree will change its shape a bit as I add more branches. I'm gonna go back to my 5 8 inch angle brush. Same mixture. Little extra water. I know usually I tell you not to underbind your paint, but I think with this painting, it doesn't really matter so much because we're not gonna be painting like a lighter color over this. Well, I mean our highlights, but it's okay if some of this color pulls into there. I like to get elbows in my old gnarly trees. So just kind of push and pull like a corner, give it a little corner. Let's take this branch out and really give it some shape. Corner there, a little elbow there. Maybe let's make it sharper. Be patient with your tree. I know that sometimes doing a bunch of branches can kind of make you impatient. Anyway, it does me sometimes. <laughs> I'll start on a tree with the, the intention of making it this huge majestic tree full of all these branches and then I start going and I get bored with the branches and I stop. And I think, oh, that's enough branches. But then afterwards I always look at it and I'm like, oh man, I should have put more branches in there. don't be afraid to make them overlap each other you know if it's if it's an old twisty tree even if it's not an old twisty tree those branches might overlap each other I like to use an angle brush when I do branches because when you turn the brush, it kind of gets away and see it makes a little poke of a branch right there and it can suggest to you where you want to put another branch or it can just look like a gnarly old branch with a break in it. I really like that. I'm not going to get too detailed with this brush. I'll move on to another brush, but I at least want to get a good amount of some larger branches started. I think that might be good for now. I'm going to go to my long liner brush, wet it in my jar, and I want to make sure that this color that I'm using is quite thin so we can get some good detail branches on here. So with this brush, it's very, very thin so we can get hairline branches. However, we can get wider branches too, depending on how much pressure we put on the brush. So for example, I'm going to start here and kind of put a little bit of pressure, kind of twisting it and releasing the pressure as I get to the end. I can come back and get some nice teeny little thin ones going on there. It certainly takes a bit of practice to be able to get those hairline branches but I don't think it's quite as difficult as you think it might be. Let's make another little branch coming on up here. So see a good amount of pressure and I got quite a bit of a wider line. So 
So sometimes I think that when we paint, we get impatient. You know, we want, we want it done right now. We want to be satisfied right now. But I think that when we are like that, we miss out on something really important that painting offers. And that's, you know, not only is, is it like time that you get to spend on you and spend with your own thoughts, but it's almost like a meditation time. You know, if you, if you allow yourself to find that place where you're really not thinking about anything except what you're doing right that second with your brush and whatever other thoughts you have in your head. So <laughs> how do I explain this? It's a time when you can kind of get lost. You can think about whatever it is that you want to think about. But one thing you're not thinking about is, you know, judging your painting. You're not doing that. You're simply focusing on what it is that you're doing and, you know, the thoughts that might be in your head at that moment. And I certainly love to find that place. And I don't get to do that real often, you know, when I'm doing videos, because clearly I have to be thinking about what it is that I'm going to say to you, what it is that I'm going to show you. And, you know, when I get lost into my meditative space in painting, then that's kind of some boring time for you because <laughs> there's not a lot of explaining going on. It's just me painting. And I know that, you know, when you're learning, you tend to kind of follow, follow the lead. If the person you're learning from is painting quickly, doing it all in one sitting and not making any mistakes, then you might feel like that's how you should paint. That's how you need to paint, but that's not true at all. You know, you can absolutely take your time. You know, the only reason I typically show you how to do a painting start to finish without all of the error corrections and you know, which we do sometimes but is because I mean I know that it's helpful to you to know that that everyone makes mistakes but at the same time you're here to learn how to do a painting not to not to watch me fix all of my mistakes but I guess what I'm getting at is just use painting as you time. Don't put pressure on yourself, you know, to think that you have to do it as quickly as I do it, or, you know, that you have to be proud of it the first time. Everything takes practice. Absolutely everything takes practice. You know, it's like when you were learning how to drive a car, <laughs> you couldn't just you know, watch a video on how to drive a car and then go jump in a car for the first time and, and be a pro driver. You know, you had to, you had to learn. Probably you had to make some mistakes, hopefully not too detrimental mistakes, but, but I'm sure that you made some mistakes and you probably still make some mistakes when you drive. And that's just the, the nature of things. That's how things are. And it's, it's the same thing with painting. It takes practice, and even once you're practiced, you still may make mistakes. So don't let that, you know, don't let a single mistake dissuade you from continuing painting. And just because I don't point out what I perceive to be mistakes all the time doesn't mean that doesn't mean that I don't make them. It just means I know better than to point out my mistakes. So I think I'm about done with these branches. Just widening some of them out a bit.
Okay, I'm gonna go to my number six filbert, wet it in my jar, and we're gonna start adding some highlights onto our tree. So I'm gonna get that same purple, brown, black mixture. And I'm gonna mix a bit of white into it. Not a ton, I still want it to be quite dark. Just a little bit lighter than our tree. There we go, that's probably good right there. So, because I want this to be really twisty, what I'm gonna do first is just kinda decide, I think that this branch is gonna have a highlight. Bring it down, and I'm kinda rolling my brush, see how I flipped it over? Flip it over again, maybe I'll bring it out to the front here. Maybe I'll roll it and let it come back down this way. Just kind of like that. And I know that doesn't look like a highlight, but it will. I'm just going to go break up the back of that line a bit. We can push a little bit of that color down into the ground too. Just kind of almost like scribbling it on. Nothing specific. Let's do another one. Let's bring one from up here. And maybe that one kind of hides behind there. It goes down the other side of the tree maybe. Pop one right there on that high edge. Now remember where our light source is. Our light source is where the brightest area in the sky is. This is where our light source is coming from. So if this helps, because I know a lot of people are confused about where they put highlights, where, how they know where their light source is. This is our brightest area, so this is our light source. I'm gonna take my hand from my light source and start moving it toward my tree. And everywhere that it hits, first is where I'm gonna put a bit of a highlight. So I hit that area and a little bit right here. But our tree is twisty, so it doesn't have to be real exact. It's just to get an idea. So we come from here, we kind of hit right here on our tree. Maybe that comes up here. Just a decision that I made. And anyway, it hits everything on this side of the tree. It's not hitting over here, right? Because I have to hit this part of the tree first. So I'm really not gonna put any highlights down anything on this back side. I feel like we might have some right there. And probably a bit on the underside here. And I'm not gonna worry about highlighting the entire tree, just where I really want to draw some attention or where I really feel like it would have a bit of light on it. Let's go even lighter pull a little bit more white into there. And now I'm just gonna be very loose with this, just almost like dashes, see? Right there where I put those kind of squiggly marks. And just because I put a squiggly mark somewhere doesn't mean that I have to keep a highlight there. See how I'm just using the tip of my brush and just kind of pulling it in one direction or another. I want to make sure that's nice and bright there. Kind of break up that line in the back. Don't worry about making anything too dark or too bright. At this point, I would rather that you have too many highlights, too strong of highlights, than not enough or not bright enough because we can easily take them away. Easily, easily take them away. I'm going to say there's like a little piece of a root or a rock or something right there. Maybe there's another one right in there. See, I just kind of laid down some extra paint and then just pulled it out. You can do a few of those little bits all through the ground in here. Get that right up to the top edge. See, I'm just being random. I'm not drawing anything specific. We'll just have a hint of some light on the ground over here. We'll keep that going through parts of our tree wherever we feel like it's 
going to be taking on a good amount of light. And again, the reason I'm working quickly here on these highlights is so that I can avoid micromanaging them and really getting in there and being overly specific or drawing lines. You know, if I can just go, I want a highlight here, there's a highlight. Dust out the line in the back, good enough. If it doesn't look perfect, I don't worry about it because I know I'm gonna come back and change everything I know I want it bright there, so I'm just laying it in, short little brush strokes, dust that out in the back a bit. A little bit right there. And let's go lighter. Now, every time my color gets lighter, my brush strokes are a little bit smaller and I don't add quite as much of it. See that? I'm not covering all of those colors beneath. And you don't have to keep it on the colors that you just did. You can put it somewhere where that lighter color doesn't exist. So for example, there's nothing going on in there. I might just kind of pull a bit of that through there. And if I don't like it, I'll remove it later. This is another good time, just like the branches kind of get lost and let painting be a time of meditation. But you really can only do that if you're not judging. If you're judging every brush stroke and worrying that, you know, it doesn't look right or whatever, you're not going to find that place. I don't think that my highlights look perfect at all but I know they'll change, so I'm not worried about it. I'll just put a bit of this in the ground here and there. Let's go back into our dark color. So my purple brown, I'll throw a little splash of black in there. I'm looking for a color pretty close to the base color of the tree. So that dark color that we painted the tree in with in the first place. Now I can come in and take care of some of these highlights. I'm, I have a ton of paint on here, but I'm only going to be using just the very tip of my filbert. I'm going to come in here and just kind of Sketch away little bits that I don't like. Super light pressure. I can introduce texture too. So what I mean is if I look and I like this, but it's just so flat looking, I can just come in with the tip of my brush and say, okay, now it's got a little bit of texture in it. Add a little texture there. really darken it right in there and you can add as many layers as you want go back and forth dark to light and back do it as many times as you need to see for the most part I'm just kind of dusting little areas out but if there's something I really don't like, then I can just paint it right out and then it's gone. I don't have to worry about it anymore. I'm 
Make sure you keep standing back. Every few minutes, stand back. Before you, before you change something, you know, if you put a slash of dark somewhere and you think, oh, that wasn't right, I didn't want to put that there. Stand back and look at it first. And that'll help you decide if you really like it or if you want to change it. I think this is actually looking pretty good. I'm just going to punch some of these darker areas. I want to make sure that my tree has lots of little dark crevices. Anything down here that was too much, just super lightly dust over it. Kick it back a little. I've decided that right here I want a little extra highlight. Before we move on to our final color on our tree, just right in here. And back to my shadow color. cleaned off my brush pretty good. It's not completely clean. So I'm just going to get some white and it's not going to be pure white because I didn't clean my brush off all the way. Just want to punch a few spots before we add our reflection color. See super bright areas. Again, much smaller than the color before it. Just to really punctuate some of the some of the shapes. And just because we've already done the dark color doesn't mean you can't go back. So if you do something here you don't like, go back with the dark color, get rid of it. I'm trying to just do this in, you know, one or two layers, but if I were painting it for myself, I might spend a few days on this tree and really work those shadows and highlights. I don't think I want to get too terribly bright up there. That might be too bright for that high up. We'll see. Same in here. I'm just going to kind of dry brush a hint of this white in there. Right here we'll get a little bit more. It's closer to our light source. Over here, it's quite close. A little speck of water when your paint is starting to break on the canvas too much, when you're getting too much of that canvas texture showing. Okay, and our last color, I'm gonna go back into here. It's pretty light, but it's definitely got some of that purple brown in there. And I'm gonna get a bit of my yellow. Because since our light source has that warm glow to it, we wanna see some of that reflected on our tree. Well, let's pull even just a little more yellow. 
I don't want it to be bright yellow, obviously. Definitely warmer. And again, see, I can pull it into areas where that light color isn't. kind of using the edge of my brush. So I've got my filbert press like that and I'm kind of scooting sideways. So like that and up a bit. I'm just gonna take a color that's a little bit, just a little bit lighter than our first dark color and just kind of scratch some of that in here and there. because I can, just to make sure that where it's dark, it's not flat. I don't want it to look flat. So you're just almost dry brushing it into some of the areas. And then I promise we're done with the trunk of the tree. Let's add some leaves on our tree and then we're done. So I'm gonna take a paper towel and I'm gonna crumple it up into a nice tight ball. And then I'm gonna uncoil it. Crumpling it up gives me some nice little folds in here. I'm gonna find a spot with a lot of little crumples and bunch it up like that. And I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna grab some purple, I'm gonna grab some brown. Mix it with my black. So my, my paper towel has quite a bit of paint on it. And what I wanna do is I wanna make sure I don't go like that on my canvas, because I will get a ball just like that. What I wanna do is come up to my canvas and just lightly touch. And every time I touch, I touch a different part of the paper towel to the canvas. So I'm gonna start up here and just touch. I'm just gonna give it some leaves. And not even all parts of the tree have to have leaves on it. You can leave a little branch that doesn't have anything on it. And you can even put leaves where you don't have any branches. If you start noticing a pattern, no matter how you move your paper towel, just kind of uncrumple it and crumple it back up. It just changes the shape a little bit. If you do have a spot where you want some heavy leaves, you can put a good amount of pressure. So especially right up here at the top, putting almost full pressure on my paper towel. But toward the end of my branches, I'm just doing very, very faint. And this is the same way we did 
the leaves in the golden hour painting that we did a couple of months ago and I'll link that up in the information I card if you haven't seen that. Don't be afraid to take these leaves right over top of your tree trunk. You know if you were looking at a tree in the forest you wouldn't just see leaves up here and the leaves wouldn't be afraid to grow right here. You might have some that are growing you know, right there right over top of the tree trunk. I'm kind of picturing it as a spring tree, so the leaves aren't gonna to be too overly thick. I think that might be about all I do. And I had fully planned on putting highlights on the leaves, but now that I look at it, I don't feel like it needs it. So I think I'm actually gonna call it done and I'm gonna sign it. And there's your mystical forest. I hope you enjoyed painting this with me today. Make sure that you find me on Facebook and Instagram so that you can share your version with me. Just search for Painting with Jane. Feel free to mix the colors up in this painting. This would look amazing with just about any color combination you can conceive of. And like I said in the video, make sure that you take the time that you need to get the elements to look the way that you want them to. Personally me, I really could have gone on for a long time pushing and pulling the highlights and shadows in the trunk. And I do wish that I had gone just a little bit farther with the shadows, particularly in the bright highlights. Just don't forget that you can always make adjustments. Even if you've completed the painting, you can always go back and fix or change anything. Thank you for watching everyone. And I'll see you next time.